Welcome to Electron Line and in this example with osmotic pressure we're not going to try to find the osmotic pressure we're going to use the concept of osmotic pressure to find the molar mass of a substance. In this case we're going to look at polystyrene. Now polystyrene is something that's used in a lot of different products. It's a petrochemical product that's used for like packing peanuts and styrofoam and in uh, yogurt cups and you name it. All kinds of various places where we use polystyrene. Polystyrene is kind of a chain like this, you use the benzene ring with some CH and CH2 uh, molecules in order to form these long chains and then that's then used for all kinds of products that we use in daily life. So let's say we want to have, we have a particular sample of polystyrene and we want to know what the molar mass of that is, the mass per mole. And so let's say we add it to a solution, now, of course in this case we have to add it to benzene. Benzene is a solvent and so we can have pure benzene on one side and on the other side of the semipermeable membrane we can have benzene with polystyrene added to it. And let's say that we add 5 grams of the polystyrene and then we measure the osmotic pressure. Let's say the osmotic pressure in that case would be 7.6 torr which is about 0 0.01 atmospheres or 1% of atmospheric pressure. So from that we should be able to figure out what the molar mass of polystyrene is in this particular sample. Alright, so we say well the osmotic pressure is equal to the, the molarity times the gas constant R times the temperature T. So let's say that this happens in laboratory conditions at about 25 degrees centigrade which is 298 Kelvin. Also know that the gas constant R is equal to 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres divided by Kelvin times moles. Alright, so since we know the pressure, we know R and T, we need to find M. M would be the molarity, so molarity equals the pressure divided by RT and let's plug in some numbers. For the pressure we get 0 0.01 atmospheres because we do have to put everything in terms of atmospheres. R is going to be 0 0.0821 liter times atmospheres divided by Kelvin times moles and multiply times the temperature of 298 Kelvin. So now notice that the atmospheres cancel out, the Kelvin cancels out, we're left with liters over moles in the denominator which is moles per liter and number wise for that we need a calculator. Oh, wow. Yes, 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.0821 and divided by 298 equals and we're left with 4.09, 4.09 times 10 to minus 4 that would be moles per liters. All right, so that's the molarity of the polystyrene in benzene if we put 5 grams of it in 1 liter. So now we want to know the molar mass. Now remember the equation. So to find the mass per mole, the molar mass, remember the equation we normally use in the reverse fashion. We normally say the number of moles is equal to the mass of the sample divided by the mass per mole. And since in this case this is what we're looking for, the mass per mole, we're going to reverse this equation and write it like this. We're going to write as mass per mole by bringing this to the numerator up here is equal to the mass divided by the number of moles. Okay, so notice since this is the molarity, 4.09 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter, since we have one liter of the sample, then we, that means that we have this many moles of polystyrene. So that will go over here, the number of moles is that number right there. The mass is given as 5 grams and so we can then write this as, this is equal to 5 grams divided by the number of moles that we have which is 4.09 times 10 to the minus 4 moles and notice that the mass per mole will be grams per mole, that's the units that we need. So all we have to do is take 5 and divide it by 4.09, so 5 divided by 4 0.09 e to the 4 minus equals and that gives us 12,000 roughly 12,200 rough number because you know we have polystyrene can come in various types so we have 12,200 grams per mole 
And that would be the approximate molar mass of the polystyrene that we're dealing with. So that's a very handy, handy way to figure out the molar mass of a substance if we really don't know what we're dealing with. So all we do is we add it to a solvent, we measure the osmotic pressure, from that we find the molarity, and from the molarity we find the molar mass, or the mass per mole. So that's uh, pretty tricky, pretty interesting, uh, very useful, and uh, another great example of how we can use osmotic pressure.